We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, heart-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. I was driving in today and... I was thinking about how the Democrats were freaking out about the budget not growing enough and how they like to tax everybody, and before anybody talks, I'm going to turn their microphones on. You're already on, so you're on the same patch as me, so now I can't shut you off unless I go over here. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Grok Talk. We're trying some new things. Um, he can reach. Yeah, we, no, I we've can't. Got, we've got more headsets. We've got the other board fired up. We're recording on two digital devices as a test. The camera's a little bit higher. Uh, welcome to Grok Talk. Today we have Susan Olson with us. Um, Hello. And we also have Yvonne Dean Bailey coming in. She won her primary, and she's got a special election coming up. We want to talk to her. And, of course, Jody Underwood's coming to talk to us about Croydon and school choice. You so those will be the things slayer. that we – yes. we uh, And I, uh, I I must say, I, I, I am writing for Watchdog Arena at watchdog.org, and the post I wrote about Croydon school choice, so far the best well received. So it's an excellent – Excellent thing we want to talk about are details. Oh, details. Yeah. So, uh, we'll get into that. And, of course, Susan is here to do a two-way update. We'll do some legislative stuff. And then in the final segment, we'll talk about squirrels. And uh, that's what we do here. At Yay! Talk. And please, by all means, go to granitrock.com because that's where we do most of our heavy lifting. And uh, if you like this program and you want to listen to the previous versions of it, go check out iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, iHeartRadio. Of course, we are also on YouTube and Ustream. Mm-hmm. And that's all the new stuff. So, so come check it out. So, does the more shorn Steve like the higher camera? Steve wanted the camera higher. Why? Because it was pointing up his nose. Ah. <laughs> ah. So okay, after well. after ninety two episodes of it pointing up my nose, yes. I have decided to elevate it a little. And of course, we're using such a high tech way of doing it. We have an empty coffee. No, can. it's not empty. There's coffee in there. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's even better. That's more of a more, more stable, yes. yes. Yeah. And it's good coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Colombian coffee. It's, it's 100% uh, I'm turning myself Arabica, Arabica beans. Oh, yeah. Arabian beans from Colombia. Yeah. And, and don't so would Arabian they beans. So would they take Hispanic? Well, you can get, you can get <laughs> Asian can hot sauce that's based on peppers that were originally grown in South America. So what difference does it make? And, you know? and, and ma- made in California. Right. Sarachi or mayo. New I York to City. Try it. What? Sriracha. That's good stuff. It's it's a hot sauce that's made in California. The the factory where Sriracha hot sauce is made was started by an immigrant from Vietnam. Yeah. And now the California Air something or other board wants to shut them down because the neighbors are complaining about the smells. That be that's air pollution. From the owner or from the process? From the process. Ah. So he threatened to move his company out of California and carb back down. I thought that was great. Nice. California Air Resources Board, which yes. sounds a lot like uh, Resources. That's ca- good the carburetor that you have in your car or had, or carb as in carbon. It also sounds a lot like the Portsmouth Blue Ribbon Committee on Sustainable Practices. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's all of the above anyway. They're all the same progressives. Now, they allowed Uber, right? Uh, they are still debating that and the method they are. Yeah, that was the, uh, what is the problem? The interesting what is thing, the problem well, with Uber? There isn't. You, you, what would be interesting taxis is... Taxis and medallions Well, the, and the taxi service hates it, but well, the actual do. board that is responsible for managing that has ac- announced that, that they were in favor of bringing Uber in and that they thought if we did this... We would be changing the process. There would no longer be a medallion system, and this board would no longer need to exist. <gasps> How often does that happen anywhere, let alone in Portsmouth? So it was really big news. I did write about it on GraniteRock.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we post or two. But, yeah, yeah, that's still – there's still a little debate. You know, the, the taxi people are still pissed because their monopoly has been – you know, their cartel – has been cartel, okay, taxi cartel, has been uh, invaded and <laughs> disrupted, and Give they're and they're going to have to compete. Oh my God! With the free market, uh, and I terrible. can understand why some of them would be because I'm not sure what the going price is in 
Portsmouth, but you go to Boston or New York or you know New York, a medallion, which is the little doobie. Yeah, like a million dollars or it's something. A, it, it was. It was. It, it was. No it's a million dollars for this medallion. The medallion allows you to legally operate a taxi cab, and these things aren't cheap, as we just said. A million dollars. And, yeah, just to be able to drive a taxi cab, and so you got to wonder how Uber, much money they make if it's worth a million dollars. Well, the actual drivers, not not much. Now the taxi owners. Lots. But now with Uber, you know, I saw some reports that cut that medallion uh, value in half. Now, imagine that you just spent a million dollars for one of these medallions, and next week it's worth half that. I can see Talk about being underwater. Well, you made a bad investment. Yeah. Well, it, again, but think about it. Think about force. all the capital that you'll be freeing up that's not being wasted on medallions that you can use in other parts of the economy. Oh, no. That medallion price, the person who bought the medallion, it's like having bought a, an expensive house at the top of the last uh Your medallion bubble. is underwater. Yeah. Wow. It is underwater. I mean, that that's not just being able to use that capital somewhere else. That capital is gone, just like the stock market oops. when it crashes. All yeah, right. Oops. So don't forget, check us out. Facebook, Twitter, Granite Rock. Uber. Uber. <laughs> and use Uber. Yes. We support free market principles and technology. We also support uh, I, the Second I, I, Amendment, which is why... Uh, and Ms. I have used Susan Uber is in New here, York, uh, and it works better than the cabs. Yes, it costs only fractionally more unless it's. Well, we went, we went to CPAC. Everybody was talking about taking an Uber if they couldn't get the bus. Yeah, you know, we'll, so. we'll, we'll yeah. Uber it. It's it's joined language as a as a verb. Oh my! Um, and, and it works. And, and what's interesting is they have congestion pricing. Mm-hmm. So of course the liberals complain they're going to be ripped off. If they also have volume if it, pricing. If if you, you, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. If it's two point five x the the standard rate, the difference is. Uh, during peak periods, you can stand on the corner in the pouring rain and never get a yellow cab because they're either all off duty or all too busy. But uh, with Uber, you just simply pay the going rate for the congestion. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a demand thing. If there's demand. a lot, really, really heavy demand, there's an extra Dem- charge. Yeah, Price you, you, gouging. You do actually get a break if you share the ride. I too. was wondering if somebody was going to expand this to like local package delivery because it's basically the same concept. You're just delivering material instead of people. Well, FedEx yeah. kind of does that. And, well, uh, yeah. And they try to make the drivers. When you use FedEx, you have to have an account and everything. What if you could just, you know, have an app and say, hey, I need to deliver this box from here down the street and I can't leave? And you just send in a message well, and somebody comes and picks it up, then you pay flat rate to have them move oh, it for that's, you. That's covered already. It's called TaskRabbit. Now, I'm not sure how it is out here, but in the major cities, it's a company. Where individuals say, all right, it's, it's a marketplace. I'm willing to do your errands for X amount of dollars. Um, and it's working very well. You can hire people. Basically, it's a bunch of independent contractors. It's sort of like a taxi dispatch. Requests come in. People bid on, on the job. And then you hire them. And it's Task cost- Rabbit. Task Rabbit. It's more popular in the big cities because there's a lot more. What, like Manchester? Pe- no, more like big Boston. City. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Manchester's a cozy little burg. <laughs> no, I think my high school had more graduating seniors, but but, it, but it's possible. But so that that works too. And it, again, it's a decentralization. Everything's going to centralization except for government. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Well, we saw that with Obama. I mean, he, we, things were. You know, one of the. One of the sites I go to is um, part of the Gawker uh, empire, but it ha- infinitely wild, I think it is. And the top post right now is the Republicans want to sell the national forest. No, they don't want to sell them. They want to give them to the states. But you should hear, or you should watch oh, yeah, the I comments. Read some of that. Oh, Good yeah. Lord. yeah it is. Holy The cow. people who actually live there and elect the local representatives can't possibly manage their own forest. You got to do it from Washington D.C., which is five and a half hours away. What, and, uh, what if the states just all stood up and said, "We are sovereign. This is our territory." We did talk about this during the Bundy Ranch thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, if all they... the states, if if your state just said, just your state, if New Hampshire got a governor and a legislature and just said, "You know what? Get out." <laughs> Yeah, all, all, we could. All, all, I know all, we could, we could. Yeah, and they all, can't do a damn thing. We would have to pay the cost of managing, and we would have to assume responsibility as citizens for sure. that, but we wouldn't have to deal with their crap anymore. And uh, that's the difference between us and the collective Democrats 
socialists because they don't believe we're capable of doing that. They, they immediately demean it and demonize it by saying, well, that's downshifting of cost. No, it's not downshifting of cost. It's downshifting of responsibility we should have had in the first place. Well, we're already paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. And by by the way, let's let's refuse to pay for the Department of the Interior, which we don't need. I mean, we own what the all, interior. What all these people don't seem to understand is that exterior. we, as individual taxpayers, it, we just look up and we see all these people w- trying to raid our wallet. It doesn't matter whether we're looking up at our local folks, our county folks, our state folks, or our federal folks. He's looking it's up all, if you can't see. It's. Oh, yeah, i got to switch gears. He's, yeah, he's. We, he's <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is Preacher Skip. I'm looking up. <laughs> Lord, help it's, my wallet. No, yeah, Amen. I'm in Amen. supplication. Amen, brother. But you've got all these people coming down. It doesn't matter to the individual taxpayer what level of government is trying to take from your wallet. It's all the same result. It's money out of my wallet. I don't care whether it's the feds, the state, the county, or my locals. Yes, but I'm going to run for Senate because I'm going to go get your money back from Washington. Right. No, I don't want you to get it back from Washington. I want you to get it so it stays here in the first place. Yeah, I want you now to I stop. sound like Steve. I want you to stop taking it. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I, would, I would think that you would think that that would be easier. I'm not, but I mean that would be something that somebody should run on. Well, I, I'm still waiting for somebody to run on it around here, but uh, even at the local level, I mean, if I was going to run for the House or the Senate in the state, I would say the state takes your money for stupid stuff. I did run on that platform. And, I got and, defeated because the collectivists said, "No, we want it to go through the town." I said, "No, we ought to be keeping it more in people's wallets." Right, and that's you know your job is to. And it, isn't it always been since the beginning? The state representative's job was to protect the state from the government, uh, the federal government. That's kind of what their job was. And obviously that ship sailed, sank. Yes. yes well, wait, did. sailed, burned, then sank. <laughs> I mean, you, I think the most important article in the New Hampshire Constitution is Article 28A, which says no unfunded mandates. And it works both ways. They should be fighting any unfunded mandates from the government. Thank you, New Hampshire State Senate Republicans, we, for a Medicaid expansion. We because need somebody to put the fun back in unfunded mandates. Well, <laughs> one of the things you talked about, Jody Underwood, coming on to mm-hmm. talk about Croydon in the right. article that you wrote. I, I don't know how many folks, forgive me, caught it, but... Um, in that article, it mentions the fact that New Hampshire is not a home rule state. Yes. While the Department of Education, all these folks say, yes, local control, local control. Well, it's a myth mm-hmm. because New Hampshire is what's called a Dillon's Rule state. And what that says is local government cannot do anything that it is not permitted to do by the state legislature. So... What's written in the statutes and what Croydon is relying upon to undertake its activities is correct. Now, if New Hampshire were truly a home rule state and my little town could give one of these to Merrimack County or to the government in, uh, in Concord, that would be great. But right now, folks don't really understand. Forgive me for saying this, but folks don't really understand that New Hampshire... Uh, and local government is controlled and dominated, period, stop, by the state legislature. You can't do what they don't let you do. Now, that was part of the reason for the unfunded mandate constitutional amendment, because the state can't force my town to do something unless it's paid for because of this Dillon's Rule concept. However, yeah, there's a big however. It's called enabling legislation, and this is what the the, the tax exempts, like the regional planning commissions and the New Hampshire Housing Authority, and all of these guys. They get legislation passed. It says, and the the select board may, so you can choose whether or not you want to implement these things, and if you choose to do it, then you must pay for it. So they force it that way. And it's really a, it's actually a pretty sneaky, cool idea. It, because if I were a looter and a pillager, this is precisely the government I would have set up. Well, the other <laughs> thing is, too, though, while I was on the budget committee, I actually asked our town administrator and the representative to the budget committee from the select board and the representative from the school board, 
I read that amendment. I mean, uh, that article. I said, how many things are we paying for that are mandated by law, state, county, or local, or, or uh, federal, that we are having to pay for because you guys can't say no? Do you know they refuse to look that up? I bet. We're going to take 60 seconds. We'll continue this. Hopefully get to 2A because that's what we said we were going to talk about right after the break. 